and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this form in Word. In my last video I showed you how to make this a digital form but in this video I'm going to show you how to actually create this form from scratch. So let's open a new document. Here I've just got a normal default document open and the first thing I'm going to do is go to layout and go to margins and change my margins to narrow. So I've now created a greater space that I can work with to create as much information on this page as possible. I'm just gonna press the return key once just to give us enough space for a title at the top. Then I'm going to go to insert, table, insert table. I'm just going to select two rows. You can use these arrows here or you can just insert the figure because the number of rows I need is 34 and press OK. So for the next part of this video, all I'm going to do is insert all of my text. Now, if you want to do the job application form, you can simply copy all the text that I'm putting in. If not, you can put your own text in. It's completely up to you and very customizable. So after I put the text in, we're gonna speed up the video. Then I'm gonna come back and show you how to customize the entire form, which hopefully will be very simple and easy. Okay, so we've got all the information in our form, so we need to just do a little bit of customization. So the first thing is the consistency of the text. You can see that some of my text has capital letters for every word, and some of it doesn't. So you can make the choice which way you want your text to lie. So for example, this one hasn't got capital letters for each word. So you can just go up to the Home tab, go along to this icon here, and you can select any one of these. In particular, you can select capitalize each word and that will change for you. And I'm happy with the rest of my text. So the next thing is our title text. So this element here and everything else we put in capitals. If you want to select multiple sections of text, select the first one, hold down your command or your control key on your keyboard and go ahead and continue to select each of your titles. Once that's done, you can go to the Home tab and of course you can go over to the Font Customization Tools here and select from any of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is make it bold and I'm just going to go and change the colour. You can select from any of the colours here. So let's just select a dark blue and you can also see that our lines are quite close together. They're quite narrow, these rows. So I'm going to select the entire table and I'm going to go up to Table Layout and along to the height here and this is where you can change the height of your rows. So you can use this arrow here. So if I click once, you can see I've got a greater space. And if I click one more time, you can see now we're up to 0.7. And if I just scroll out a little bit, you can see we're almost at the bottom of our page. Additionally, you can see the text is just at the top of each of these rows. So if I zoom in, you can see the text is at the top and I'd like the text to be in the middle of each cell. So once again, if I scroll out, I can select my entire table with this top left square, go to table layout and go to this section here. And this will allow you to insert your text wherever you like. So I'm going to align to center left. Now my text is in the center of that row. So some of these rows we now need to split because here I've got a question preferred employment and I want to put several different options in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the entire row, go up to split cells, and I want five columns, and then click OK. So you can now see I've split it, but if I don't want these two words on different rows, I need to make this cell bigger. So select these two cells because I want to identify this line here and move it over and once I've got those words on the same line, I can then just select these four cells and make them equal by then going up to distribute columns. And that will make each of these rows equal or each of these cell distances equal. And then I can put in my text. 
and in each of these you'll need to insert a box so that it can be ticked. Now of course this form can be a digital form as you can see in my previous video or you can have this that you can print out and you can hand it to somebody and they can literally write on it if you want to. In that case you can put in a box here. The easiest way to do that is to go to insert text box, draw text box and click and draw out a small text box. If you want it to be a perfect square hold down your shift key and then you can just move this. It is a little bit more tricky because it can interfere with the text but this is the quick and easy way to do it. Then you can just copy it, Command and Control C, deselect it, Command and Control V and then you can move these about. Now you can see how difficult it is. It can be a bit of a challenge because they are quite small. So another way to do this is actually to use the developer tab as I talked about in the last video. If you haven't got the developer tab, just go to Word, Preferences, Ribbon and Toolbars, down this menu here, down the bottom, you'll see Developer, make sure it's checked and click Save. In the Developer tab, you have these options that says checkbox. So go to the end of your text here, press the space bar and click checkbox and it will insert a checkbox. Just take off the shading here and you've got a lovely box there which your user will simply be able to tick the relevant box. So again, I'm going to do that the same with these two as well. I want yes, no answers in these two lines. So select this one, go to table layout, split cells, and I want two columns. And again in here, do exactly the same, split cells, two columns, click OK. And in this one, we want yes. And once again, we're going to use the same technique, go to the developer tab, pop a checkbox in so that the user can just click the relevant box. Perfect, so now we can zoom out and see our table. Now you can leave it like this and just put in a title at the top, but what I like to do is be quite specific about where I want all of the lines in my form. So I'm just gonna select my table, go to table design, and over here is where you can control and customize all of the border lines in your table. So the first thing is the color, you can change the color, and you can change the border lines that are there. So if I click no borders, you can see it's taken all the border lines out of my table. However, if I click on this and go down to view grid lines, it will just give me the grid to show you where everything is in my table, but it won't show up if I save this as a PDF file or if I print this out. So what I can do is select my first selection here, go up to borders, and then I can select inside horizontal borders, deselect, and you can see where those lines are there. Let me just zoom in. You can just see where those lines have been placed. I can continue to select those and go to borders again and select bottom border where it will run the bottom border along my selection. So it will do all of this based on what you have selected. So if I just put my cursor in this cell here and click across and a bottom border, then you can see the bottom borders running along here. You can also do the vertical borders. So for example, here, if I just wanted these two lines here in the middle, go up to borders and select inside vertical border and you can see there's one there. So if I just take off the grid lines, you can see how my table's looking now. So I'm going to go through and select the various areas that I want my lines and speed up the video and come back at the end and show you how to put in the title and also how to save it. Okay, so all of my lines are in now. I'm gonna to go to the top here. I'm just gonna press my return key once, just to give us an extra space at the top to put in our title. I'm gonna see if I can get away with a second one. That's perfect, just to move that down. Then I'm going to go to insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. Then in here, put my text in, select my text, go to the home tab. I'm going to capitalize each or uppercase each character. Then I'm going to go to increase font size, keep clicking until I'm happy with the font size. I'm going to make it blue and then I'm going to center it inside my text box. Just reduce the size of this text box. Then I'm going to go to layout, align, align to center. 
deselect. I've got this box around the outside. I've also got a white background. So you can see there's a white background to this box. So let me just center that again. So to get rid of all of that, go to Shape Format, go to the Outline tool here, select No Outline. Go to the Shape Fill Color and select No Fill. And then go to Insert, Shapes, click on the square, click and draw out a rectangle. Move it to the top of the page. Go to Layout, Align, Align to Center. Go to Send Backwards, Center Back and then in shape format we'll take the outline off shape fill we can choose a light gray and then deselect and then you can zoom out and check you're happy with everything now as you can see we've made a second page here so one of the ways that we can correct that is adjusting the margins a little bit more so if you go over to the rulers if you can't see rulers go to view and make sure rulers are checked and then you can click between the white and gray section, your arrow will change, you can just pull down that margin and it will get rid of that second page, giving you a little bit of extra room on this top page here. Perfect, so once you're finished, you can save this as a PDF by going to File, Save As, going down here to File Format and clicking on PDF. You can then print it out and get your user to use it with a pen. Alternative, you can turn it into a digital form by watching my previous video. And the last thing you can do is to save this as a template. Go to File, Save as Template, make sure it's saved into Templates and make sure you're on Microsoft Word Templates. Then when you open up Word, you've got your templates there. You can simply open this, you can make changes to it and it'll ask you to save it as a completely separate document, therefore not spoiling the original. If after all this you really can't be bothered to do any of it but you'd like a copy of this, you can download it and all my other files in the link in the description below. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.